this coming week, the Young at Heart will be on Tuesday at Mario's. Uh, first time we've met there, so looking forward to that. Uh, I go there a lot of Sundays after worship in here, so uh, so I'm very familiar. Really good food, good fellowship on Tuesday, and a lot of fun. So I hope that you'll come and uh, join us at 11 a.m. at uh, Mario's. Also, uh, don't forget, uh, this is Thanksgiving week, so I will have my normal Wednesday message on Tuesday, and I know the bulletin says 6 p.m., uh, that's about the time that I'm leaving Kinston, headed to Gibsonville, uh, to be with uh, Courtney and Will and uh, our little gathering there, so uh, I will actually come on before 6 p.m., but I'll let you know what time, probably around 5 or so. Uh, I will come on Tuesday, so I, I'll be letting you know what time that is. Uh, don't forget uh, next Sunday, but let me say this before next Sunday, uh, uh, Saturday is our decorations for Christmas because Actually, uh, next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent, so uh, we'll start the Advent season next Sunday, and it'll be my first Advent message, first Christmas message next Sunday. I want to remind you that the Lonnie Moon Christmas offering goal this year is $2,500, and uh, so you can start giving toward that, and there are multiple ways, but we will have the Sunday before Thanksgiving, or Thanksgiving, the Sunday before Christmas, we will actually have uh, a special time where we can give that offering, but you can give it anytime, and also online, you can give it online uh, through our website as well, so uh, be aware of that. You see everything else in the bulletin, but I do want to remind those that are going to Mike's farm. Um, we will have just a brief meeting right over to my left, real bright. Kim will lead that meeting in just a little while, right after worship today. Uh, so if you'll make your way over there, uh, she needs to have a quick meeting with everyone this morning. So all those that are Signed up for Mike's Farm. This is Thanksgiving week, and uh, this is one of my favorite videos, and it kind of sums up Thanksgiving, so watch this video.
I'm going to share some of his videos uh, in uh, this week and the following week so you'll kind of get a, a little bit of a glimpse and a taste of uh, the kind of talent that he has. But I want to mention that to you. I hope that you'll be here uh, that evening to hear him in concert. Let's pray. Dear Father, we do lift up uh, these many prayer requests today that have already come my way. Dear Father, we lift up uh, Shirley's uh, sister. I know Charles and Shirley's there in Maryland. With her, she had a kidney transplant. We pray for uh, Denise. We lift her up in a very special way uh, during these days. We pray for uh, Brother Kent Watson, who's been in the hospital last week, but got home yesterday. We lift him up and pray for him in a very special way. Dear Father, we also have many uh, other needs around us. I, I know that Chuck's here today, but he had surgery a couple of weeks ago, a week and a half ago, and we pray for him and pray for his recovery and continue to lift him up. Uh, also, there are many families who have lost loved ones in uh, recent days over the last two or three weeks, the Griffin family, the Price family, the Glover family, uh, the Humboldt family, the Coleman family, and perhaps for other families. And we lift all of those families up this morning and pray for them. We thank you for this Thanksgiving season. We thank you for who you are and whose we are. We thank you for Jesus and for salvation that is so readily made available to whoever follows your only begotten Son. We praise God that we can celebrate not only today, and may it not be just a Thursday event, but I pray that we will praise you and thank you every single day, 365 days a year that it will be. Uh, thank you and praise on our lips. Lord, be with us today, and uh, especially cover a multitude of people in our midst who are sick, others are traveling, we give them all to you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
preaching on the text that uh, I don't think I preached on uh, really uh, in 30, almost four years. So it's going to be interesting next Sunday. So come next Sunday for that. Uh, Psalm 100, of course, I preached on the Psalm 100 uh, many times. So let's uh, stand as we read the God's Word. 100 Psalm. Shout triumphantly to the Lord of all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him or with joyful songs. Acknowledge that Yahweh is God. He made us and we are his. His people, the sheep of his pastor. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks unto God or to him and praise his name. For Yahweh is good and his love is eternal. His faithfulness endures through all generations. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this time. Thank you for this season. Thank you for Thanksgiving and what it means to America, what it means to the world. And Lord, I pray that we will have a good week, but that we will also live with thankful hearts each and every day. Lord, get me out of the way. May Jesus be high lifted in this message today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. On Thanksgiving Day, we carry out a tradition which really is as old as America is. In 1621, I told you last Sunday that a terrible year in which half their number died of starvation and disease, the pilgrims set aside three days in December to praise the Lord for the bountiful harvest of corn. Many years later, in 1789, President George Washington set aside a national day of Thanksgiving as November 26th as a day unto the Lord. And then, in 1863, Abraham Lincoln revived this tradition by giving thanks unto the Lord. And then finally, in 1941, the United States Congress decreed that the fourth Thursday in November would be a national day of Thanksgiving. Wow. Thanksgiving is one of my favorite times of the year. I love Thanksgiving, especially the dinner, don't you? Absolutely. I love gathering with all the family. I love eating so much and just stretching out on the couch, watching the football game and dozing off and going to sleep for a while. I love a time when we stop and give thanks. For you see, God has truly been good to my family and me. We should never be guilty of just setting aside one day as Thanksgiving Day. For you see, every day for a believer ought to be a Thanksgiving Day. Amen? First Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything you thankful, for, this is the will of God. We may not always give thanks for everything, but we can give thanks in everything. Not for everything necessarily, but in everything. And Paul was talking about the time of the millennial reign of Christ on the earth. And he was looking forward to that day with great thanksgiving. And so this morning we come on this Thanksgiving week to the 100th Psalm. We're going to look at the psalmist and what he has to say. Uh, right uh, above this psalm, it says a psalm of thanksgiving. Well, what caused the psalmist to be thankful? Why was he worshiping and shouting and, and thanking God? Well, let's look at it and see. Number one, as we think about why should we practice thanksgiving every day? Number one, we are thankful when we enter into his presence. Notice what the Bible says. The psalmist opens by issuing a call to worship and to praise the Lord. He teaches us how to come into God's presence. Boy, ain't that marvelous. By the way, nothing brings us into the presence of the Lord like lifting up his name. I mean, just praising his holy name. No 
perception of who God is. It is imperative that we never forget who we're serving. I just said we serve the Lord. That's a way of coming into His presence, but when we never forget who we're serving, we are children of the living God. We are servants of the living God. Let us learn about Him and rejoice in all that we learn. Well, let me give you three words about Him. Number one, power. A word about His power. This reminds us that God created the world. The heavens and the earth. We are in this world because the Lord in His great power formed man in His image. I saw something to be taken lightly, friend. That's something for which to praise Him for. We were created in the very image of God. I have to be honest, great creative power. There it says, recreative power. When we were stained in sin, thank God He redeemed us and made us fresh and new in the image of His own Son, Jesus. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Everything becomes new. Wow. And so we we rejoice in his power. But also there's a word not only about his power, but about his purchase. The psalmist says that we are his people. Did he catch that? We are his people. We are his personal possession. We're not our own. We walk with a Christ. The blood of Jesus, God's only Son, His only begotten Son, He shed His blood that we might live forever. When we were sold under sin, He came and died for us, paid the price to set us free. And we're free indeed. There are three words translated for redeemed in the New Testament. The first word, literally means to buy in the marketplace. It has reference to purchasing a slave right off the auction block. That is what Jesus did when he died on the cross. Praise God, he paid the full price that we might go free from the penalty of sin. Redemption through the blood of his only son, Jesus. And my friend, that is Reason to be thankful. That's reason to be thankful. That's reason to rejoice today. There's a second word that literally means to take off the mark. Woo, I'm gonna get excited. We're off the mark. I'm off the mark. Jesus paid the price for us and we're no longer up for sale. Hello? He bought us, and indeed, He intends and He will keep us. We're His forever. In the hand of God, never to be plucked out again. And how in the world can we say, here not be thankful today, and not shout and sing and serve today? Because He's done all this for us. Well, I want you to never ask of the third word. It means to release after the payment of purchase of the purchase price. It pictures owner who buys a slave and then turns that slave loose. That is what Jesus did for us. He bought us off the slave block of sin after he redeemed us and removed us from the cell and then set us free, not free to go and sin, but free to go and serve the Lord. Being redeemed from sins, adopted sons of God, adopted into the family of God. How in the world can't we just celebrate in this place today? That means we're special. You're special, I'm special. We special children of God. Never let anyone tell you you weren't someone important. You're a child of the most high God. And that makes you the most valuable thing that God will ever look upon. So we see his purchase. We see his power. But we also see his provision. This first 
reminds us that we are his crop. Did you catch that? Under the protective oversight of a good shepherd and a great shepherd. Philippians 4.19 says, God shall supply all of me according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Wow. Everything we need, whether it be physical, emotional, spiritual, our God can provide it with No good thing is with help from them who walk uprightly. You got to catch on to that. Everybody under the shepherdship of our God. He provides, he protects, he takes care of his kids. He is right there to help us with every need we have in our life. And so we have his presence. We have his person. And now it is good. We have his praises. We are thankful when we express his praises. Our text gives us three great ways to express our praises for the Lord. He's worthy of our praises. He's supposed to get our glorification. He, he snatched me out of hell and has saved my soul. We need to know how to do it properly. Well, this is not in the back of Spain. It's not the way we do it here. Well, I'm just trying to get you fired up for heaven. To crank up for heaven because some of you are going to be in culture shock when you get there. You're not 
praise. A sacrifice of praise means thanksgiving and praise to God even when we don't feel like it. Even when we don't get up and we feel like it in the morning, we praise Him anyway. Because it's not based on feelings, it's based on who He is. Hundreds of times in my life. 